Shanti Hariyo Tas Om Asato Ma Sadgamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Lead us thou God from unreal to real from darkness to light, from death to immortality. Om Shanti 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 Hare Om Tassa. Welcome to Yoga for Health, Happiness and Liberation. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the, our show. And uh, you are going to learn a great deal of uh, yoga. Today we will give you the basic understanding of yoga. So first, I like to give my uh, thanks, our salutations to our Guru Swami Shivananda's picture you just saw. So, uh, <clears throat> today we, we will talk about the basic philosophy and also how to bring two things, how to be happy and how you can be peaceful. If you are peaceful, you will be happy and if your health is good, you will be happy. So two things you need to be happy, peaceful mind and good healthy body. So this is uh, the subject and yoga is a big help in bringing the basic peace and also uh, good health. For good health, you need flexibility. If you are very stiff, you lose your movement and then that restricts you a great deal. You lose your freedom. So yoga exercise, Hatha yoga exercise brings the basic uh, flexibility. Now today I will show you if you are stiff how you can get more limbered, more flexible. So there is a technique to do that and today we will discuss that. First I like to bring the basic thought process as you will see here on this chart. Okay, there are two basic philosophy in yoga. One philosophy is called Sankhya Yoga and Vedanta. Uh, so Sankhya is a basic yogic philosophy which we follow. Once you will understand that, so let's talk about the Vedanta philosophy where they say God and, and the material world and the human being are all into one. So that is a Brahman means God, Maya is the illusive force of the material world and the Atman is a man. So all are interrelated and they are part of it. This is a Vedantic philosophy. Uh, now if you look at the Sankhya philosophy, which is the next one, Sankhya philosophy says God and, and material world are two separate entities. So this is very important thing, this uh, two philosophy, God and part, uh, man is part of God, but when it is in the material body, it is separate. In other words, if this is a man, this is a body and material world, the body is separate. It has its own nature. So what it is saying in, in, the East, in the Western philosophy, God and human being and the body are separate, but the soul and the body are united. While in Eastern philosophy, with Sankhya, the soul is part of God, but soul is not the body. If this is a human body, the soul is their separation. Okay, so what does he say? That my body has his own life. My spirit lives in the body. When the body is old and cannot function anymore, the soul has to leave. 
doesn't die, it just leaves. But the body, it goes back to the nature. So this is the reason you are a guest in this body. And your objective of uh, yoga is to make the body healthy so you can live longer and happier. How you can do it? Through uh, meditation, through hatha yoga exercise. Now, how can we uh, um, keep the body strong and healthy? So first thing you have to realize that this body is not you. You, your, your spirit is you, but this body is not you. That distinction is there. Then you say, I will bring my spirit and the body harmonize. Harmonize, just like if you want to be happy in your family, you have to bring the whole family together and love each other and not separate them. If you, ooh, ooh. So what brings unhappiness in my body? If I concentrate too much on the, my pleasures, eat too much, n not realizing that this body has its own life, I better have discipline in my life. And then laziness, I don't want to exercise. So that brings unhappiness in the body because body cannot function. So what are the two things you have to do? Exercise and also love your body. Understand the body has its own life, uh, own living. And when it is dies, when it's finished, soul has to leave. So keep this body very strong. Now let's, uh, let us examine a very wonderful idea. I just want to show you. Okay, look at this chart's very important understanding. You will understand as you will see. Let's see the young man. I'm showing this young man. Uh, that young person, the black area is a relaxed muscle. Now, when he stretches the muscle, he comes into the, this extension. He comes into this area, he can stretch the muscle without any pain. But here is an area of margin of pain. So here is a margin of pain. So you have to realize that if you come in the margin of pain, you cannot come very close to the edge, otherwise you will break that muscle. Now look at this person who is 40 years old not doing any exercise. This flexibility has gone. And margin, then immediately he comes in the margin of pain. He's already gotten too stiff, too old, and muscles are too uh, bound, has lost his flexibility. Now how can we bring some amount of flexibility back and look at the chart a little bit lower? What you have to do, stretch the muscle and come into the area of pain. Margin. This is a margin of pain. You have to come into the margin of pain in your exercise, stretching. If you come into the margin of pain, what will happen after a few years? Look at the law here. This becomes relaxed. You, you have increased your stretchability and, and margin of pain has shifted. You might not get back to when you were five years old, but you will come back to the age of 30. But the key again is when you do the yoga, you have to come into that margin of pain. So uh, the chart says no pain, no gain. But you have to make sure that you don't come very close to the edge. Otherwise you'll break your muscle. So you have to be very sensitive while you are stretching your muscle. So remember that very important thing is, but if you just stretch a little bit and go back, you will not improve anymore. To improve your, uh, flex improve your flexibility, you have to come into margin of pain. But how can you come in that margin of pain? And this is what I have to teach you today. So let's explain. First we are going to do is uh, 
mountain pose, Parvat Asan is called. It's a very important uh, Parvat Asan. Parvat Asan has two basic uh, things it does. It stretches the back muscles. And also it helps your spine. You, you, you stretch your spine upward because every day you are pulled by the gravity so you are, uh, you are damaging your spine. To regenerate the spine you have to stretch upward and then you become more healthy. So your youth is your spine. Now, the spine will be stretched two ways in the Parvatasana. One is stretching upward and also forward. Okay? Now, remember, when you can stretch, you cannot stretch when you are inhalation. Now, remember that very important point. You must not stretch your muscle while you are inhaling your breath. But when you are exhaling, stretch. Now suppose you are here. Inhalation, hold. Exhalation, stretch. Now you are stretched so far. Hold the position. Inhale again. Don't come back. And then try to stretch a little bit more. And at that time you are coming into the margin of pain. And hold that position and then come back slowly. So it is very important how you stretch. Now I'll just show you, there are three ways we are going to do this uh, mountain pose, Parvata Asan. Now there are three ways of sitting. This is called easy posture. This is, that is called Sukhasana. Siddhasana is one leg up. Padmasan is two leg up. All is his full lotus. And now, when you stretch, you will have different stretch with all three different positions. So let me just show you. First is, first is, prayerful hands on the floor, inhale, exhale. Now the stretching will start. Inhalation, exhale, stretch. I'm stretching upward, stretching my spine, stretching my Okay, now watch me. Inhale, now I'm exhalation, I'm moving forward. <clears throat> Come up again. Now if you want to get better stretch, you put lotus posture, inhalation, and then you stretch, it's a different stretch altogether. And then next time you can put your head down, hands down over your head and come down, and then third time you can put your hands on your chest, and then coming in and coming out up and then you sit in a this is a yoga posture now as you can see if you stretch i was stretching upward and then next time stretching forward so back muscles are exercised and then the spine is exercised. If you do this posture, if you have backache, it will go away. I started yoga when my back was really hurting. I was 32 years old and my back was always giving me trouble. So I started yoga practices. Now, uh, I'm 32 years <laughs> after, I on those, in, during these 32 years, I have never had my, any problem with the back. So again, back problem has two basic elements. If you are too tense, mentally disturbed, 
you will have back trouble. And not enough exercise. So there are two basic reasons people have back trouble. First is mentally disturbed. And second thing, not doing stretching exercise. You might call stretching exercise, I call yoga exercise. Now yoga exercise has two elements. One is doing for beauty. And second thing, you do it as a prayer, like a meditation. And I will show you, doing beauty, you, so God gives you whatever you want. You, you do yoga as asana to be beautiful, you become beautiful. But when you're doing yoga asana as a prayer, then you are going to be peaceful and beautiful. So why should you do yoga for only beautiful? Now, it has to be done meditatively. So just watch me how I do meditatively. I don't treat body as, oh, this is my body, okay. No, this body has its own life, as I told you. Sankhya Yoga. So what you have to do is to treat body as a friend. And meditatively, don't let your mind go in a hundred places. Bring your mind back to yourself. So you are bringing this element of uh, element of peace as you are centering yourself within yourself so that is very important and then i'm doing stretching this brings tremendous peace and tremendous again health because you are stretching just watch me i will do now this is called uh, a monkey pose or uh, bandra asana. It is very wonderful asana. And as you will see, I'm stretching my body, but very meditative. See here first, First you inhale and exhale as you go down. While you are down, you inhalation, exhalation, stretch. Stay in that stretched position, then you get your benefit. Otherwise you don't get the benefit. So you first you stretch. bring your legs a little bit inside and stretch again then you bring your legs more inside and stretch again and then you can sit down on the top of it you can then this ankle becomes more limber, so you stretch. Listen, uh, this we welcome you uh, in the show. Please come and uh, uh, watch this show. This again, we wish you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year coming to you. And please watch our show on the second and the fourth Sunday, fourth Thursday of every month, and uh, seven thirty to eight. And practice yoga, uh, little meditation. Later on, we'll be teaching you meditation, and also a basic philosophy how to relax. So tune in and start practicing yoga. Hatha Yoga. Every morning, spend at least 10, 15 to 20 minutes of Hatha Yoga, Pranayama, 
uh, breathing exercises and also little prayer. So in, our, in your holidays, I recommend you focus on all your loved ones. Don't focus too much on material things and bring peace and love at home. So which is, uh, we thank you again for tuning in this uh, show. And what you hear in the back is the Indian classical music. It is very beautiful. I hope it inspires you and brings some uh, peace and joy in this holiday season. season. Uh, and uh, thank you again for tuning in. And we wish you Merry Christmas and again Happy New Year. Thank you for tuning in this show. <laughs> Yeah.